Hey guys, this is Evan from Easy Origami, and today I'll be teaching you how to fold an Origami Marta star designed by Maximiliano Ortiz. This model requires four square sheets of paper. Each unit is folded from a triangle cut from half a square, and we're going to need a total of eight triangles to fold the units. So I'll show you how to cut the four squares into eight triangles before we get started. And using four inch squares will result in a model about five and a half inches wide. Diagrams for this model can be found in Maximiliano's book called Origami Stars, which is available on Amazon. There's an English and a Spanish version of the book, and it includes diagrams for 23 of his excellent modular star designs. So if you're interested, I'll post a link to the book in the video description below. Once you've prepared your paper, we're going to start with our first square with the white side up. And I'm going to be using larger paper with color on one side and white on the other, just to make it a bit easier to follow along. And before we start folding the units, we'll need to cut each of our four squares in half to create a total of eight triangles. So we're gonna start by pre-creasing our first square in half diagonally. So take this bottom right corner and fold it up to the top left corner. Align the corners and the edges, then make your crease, and then unfold. And then we wanna cut our square in half along this diagonal crease that we just created just like this, and then we'll be left with two triangles that are the correct shape for our units. Then you want to repeat the same process on the remaining three squares so that you end up with a total of eight triangles. And once you've prepared all eight triangles, then we're going to start with our first triangle with the white side up. And we're going to start by making a small reference crease by folding the model in half vertically. So take the bottom right corner and fold it over to the bottom left corner. Align the corners and the edges. And then we're not going to crease all the way. We just want to make a small pinch mark at the bottom of the paper, just like this, and then you can unfold. And then we're going to fold over this left edge and align it with that reference crease. So we're going to do that by lifting up the left side of the model, and we want to pull it over to the right like this. Again, we want this colored edge to align with that small reference crease, but we also want the colored edge to align with the top point of the model here. So you may need to slightly adjust that colored layer. And once it's aligned with the top of the paper and that small reference crease, then you can make your crease all the way across. And then we want to fold up this bottom corner and align it with this left corner here. So we're going to lift up this bottom flap of paper and pull it over to the left until both of those corners are aligned. Then you can make your crease and then unfold. And then we want to align this left corner with the vertical colored edges here. And we're going to do that by creating a new crease that starts at this point where the white and colored edges intersect. And to do that, we want to lift up this colored layer on the bottom left portion of the model, and we want to pull it up and over to the right, just like this. And as you're doing this, you'll start to see that the colored vertical edges will align and the white horizontal edges will align at the bottom of the model. Our goal is to align all of those edges. So you may need to slightly adjust the paper like this. But once the colored and white edges are aligned, you'll notice that our new crease starts at that point that I mentioned before, and you can make a sharp crease through all layers and then you can unfold the flap that we just folded up. And now we're going to reverse fold along the creases that we just created. And I like to do that by lifting up this colored layer from underneath so that I can see the white layers inside. And I want you to notice this diagonal valley fold on the right side. That's the crease that we made in the previous step. So we simply want to reinforce that valley fold by pushing the left side of the model over to the right along it, just like this. So we're just reinforcing that existing valley fold. And you'll see that the model does not lie flat. We now have these vertical layers here. And that's the other crease that we made in the previous step. So we actually wanna make that crease a mountain fold by simply pinching that from the outside. And then you wanna take those vertical layers and fold them down along an existing crease as well. And then we're going to turn the model over. And now we wanna align this bottom edge with this bottom right edge here. And we're gonna do that by making a crease that starts at this point where the small reference crease intersects with the bottom edge. And we're going to do that by lifting up the left side of the model and pulling it over to the right. Again, we want our crease to start at that point where the small reference crease intersects with the bottom of the model. So I like to start there and then work my way up and over to the right, aligning the white and the colored edges. And once everything is aligned, then you can make your crease. And then you can unfold. And now we're going to make an angle bisector by aligning this left edge with the crease that we just created. And we're going to do that by lifting up the left side of the model and then we want to pull this white layer of paper over to the right like this. I like to start at the top edge and work my way down and over to the right, aligning the white edge with that existing crease. And once the white edge is completely aligned with that crease, then you can make your crease. And this time we're not going to unfold. 
And we're actually going to make another angle bisector by aligning the left and right edges of this white triangle. And we're going to do that by lifting up the right side of this white triangle, and we're going to pull it over to the left. Again, I like to start at the top edge and work my way down and over to the left, aligning the white and colored edges. And once both edges are completely aligned, then you can make your crease. And then we simply want to reinforce this existing valley fold. So we're going to do that by grabbing the flap that we just bisected, and we want to fold it over to the right along that existing crease. And now we're going to make another angle bisector by aligning the left and right edges of this white triangle. So we're going to do that by lifting up the white triangle and this top group of layers on the right, and we want to pull it over to the left. So we're just going to pull all of those layers over to the left like this. And this is similar to what we did before, except this time we want to start at the bottom of the model and work our way up and over to the left, aligning the colored edge with that white folded edge underneath. So you're basically aligning the two edges here. And once they're completely aligned, then you can make a sharp crease through all layers. And then you can unfold. And now we're going to make an asymmetrical squash fold by reinforcing the crease that we just made. And I like to do that by separating the layers on the top of the model here. And then you want to push your finger all the way inside as far as it goes. So you want to separate those layers all the way up to the top of this white edge here. And in a typical squash fold, you just flatten out the paper like this but we're going to do this asymmetrically, so it's going to be a little bit different. I want you to notice these layers on the top here that we're going to squash fold down, and we basically want to take those layers and push them over to the left as far as they go. You'll see they actually reach a certain point where they don't want to go any further, and that's where we want to squash them down. So we want to connect the point at this top edge with that point down on the bottom edge by creating a crease like this. So we're just going to make a crease connecting both of those points, and then you can simply flatten out the rest of the paper. And you can see we've made this weird asymmetrical squash fold. And it's worth noting that this crease does not align with this colored folded edge on the bottom. And from here, we're going to make another angle bisector by aligning this white raw edge with this white folded edge here. So we're going to do that by lifting up this white layer of paper on the right side of the model, and we want to pull it up and over to the left. Then just like we did before, we want to start at the top near this white folded edge, and we want to work our way down and over to the right, aligning the white and the colored edges. And once both edges are completely aligned, then you can make your crease. We're going to leave that bisector folded in, and then we want to turn the model over. And from here, we're going to make one last angle bisector. And this time, we want to align this top right edge with this vertical raw edge here. So we're going to do that by lifting up the layers on the right side of the model, and we want to pull them over to the left like this. Again, we want to start at the top and work our way down, aligning both of those colored edges. And once both edges are aligned, then you can make your crease through all layers. And once you have this, then this is one completed unit. Now you must fold seven more. And once you've folded all eight units, you're going to need two to start the assembly. Then look at one, and you'll notice that it has a small triangular flap on this white layer here. And if you lift up this group of layers on the left side of the unit, you'll see that there's a pocket underneath this colored layer here. And to make it easier to assemble the units, we're actually going to keep this group of layers lifted up. We don't want to flatten it out and make a crease, but we want to lift it up just so that we have access to this pocket underneath. So from here, we want to take our second unit, and we want to lift up this group of layers on the left, just like we did on the first unit. So again, we're not making a crease, we're just kind of lifting those layers so that we have access to the pocket inside. Then to assemble the units, we want to align this vertical raw edge on the first unit, with this folded edge here on the second unit. And it's worth mentioning that while assembling the units, the ordering of the layers is pretty important. So basically we want this small colored flap on the second unit to go on the bottom. We want this white layer on the first unit to go in the middle. And we want this colored layer on the second unit to go on top. I think it sounds more complicated than it is, but just keep that in mind while you bring the two units together. I like to start by slightly rotating the second unit like this so that the folded edge is parallel with this vertical raw edge on the first unit. And then we're going to carefully bring both units together, again making sure that that small colored flap on the second unit goes on the bottom. You can place the white layer from the first unit down on top of that. And as you continue to bring both units together, you'll notice that the colored layer on the second unit naturally goes on top. So you want to continue sliding both units together like this until the vertical edges are aligned. If you've done this correctly, both units will align at the bottom here as well. And now we need to lock both units together. So we're going to do that by folding this group of layers from the first unit back down along an existing crease, just like this, and you can flatten it out. 
Then we want to take this white triangular flap from the first unit and tuck it inside of this colored pocket on the second unit. And conveniently, there's an existing crease which will help us do that. So I like to first open up that colored pocket from underneath and then push the white triangular flap inside as far as it goes. Again, you're just going to reinforce that existing crease. So you're just going to mount and fold that flap inside. And then your model should look like this. If you turn it over to the other side, it will look like this. Then if we flip it back over, we want to rotate the model so that the second unit is now held vertically. And then we're going to add a third unit the same way. So from here, we're going to take our third unit and we want to start by lifting up the top group of layers on the left, just like we did before. Then you want to slightly rotate the third unit so that this folded edge is parallel with this vertical edge on the second unit. And we can actually do the rest of the assembly down flat on the table, so I'm going to put all three units down. So from here we want to bring the second and third units together, but I want you to think about the ordering of the layers. This colored flap on the third unit should go on the bottom, this white layer on the second unit should go in the middle, and this colored layer on the third unit should be on the top. So we're just going to slide the second and third units together while keeping that ordering in mind. If the layers are in the correct order, you should be able to slide the units together so that their vertical edges align just like this. And if you've done it correctly, you'll see that all three units will align at the bottom of the model here. So once you have this, then we need to connect the second and third units together. And we're going to do that by taking this group of layers on the second unit, and we want to fold it down and over to the right along an existing crease. This should look familiar. And again, we want to take this white flap from the second unit and tuck it inside of the colored pocket here on the third unit. So we're going to open up the third unit's flap from underneath, and we can tuck that white triangular flap inside by reinforcing the existing crease that I've marked here. So you just want to mount and fold that flap inside, just like this. You can flatten everything out. And then you want to rotate the model so that the third unit is now held vertically. And as you're moving the model around, just be careful and make sure the units stay in place. And now we're going to add a fourth unit the same way. So again, we're going to start by lifting up the group of layers on the left side. Then we want to slightly rotate the fourth unit. We can put it down flat on the table. And then we carefully want to bring the third and fourth units together, again making sure the layers are in the correct order. So you just want to slide the units together like this until their vertical edges are aligned. All of the units should be aligned at the center of the model. Then we want to fold this group of layers on the third unit back down. And we want to tuck the third unit's flap inside of the fourth unit's pocket, just like we've been doing. So you're just going to mount and fold that inside, flatten everything out. And then we want to slightly rotate the model so that the fourth unit is now held vertically. And then we're going to add the remaining four units the same way. It is tricky to connect the first and last units, so I'll go through that process in a bit more detail. Once you've connected all eight units, you'll notice that it's not as straightforward to connect the first and last units together. We can't repeat what we've been doing because we don't have that group of layers to pull up on the first unit. So to connect the first and last units together, we need to start by pulling the first unit out on top. And we just want to grab the single colored flap from the first unit, and we want to pull that layer of paper out on top of the last unit, just like this. And this next step is easier to visualize if you rotate the model. So we're just going to rotate the model 180 degrees. And then we want to take this flap of paper from the last unit, and we want to tuck it inside of this pocket here on the first unit. So we want to lift up that layer of paper on the last unit, and we carefully want to slide it inside of that pocket on the first unit as far as it'll go. So you just want to slide that entire white flap inside, just like this. And you want to push it in until both units are completely aligned. And we need to keep track of where we inserted that flap. And what I want you to do is notice this point where the first and second units intersect. And then you want to hold on to that intersection by grabbing both of those units like this. And while holding on to that point, you carefully want to turn the model over so that that point is directly in front of you. The point that we're keeping track of is right here but we need to pull some layers to the left and right so we can see what's inside. When you move those layers to the side, it should look like this. And if you slightly separate the white and colored edges like this, you can see that we have a green and a blue layer inside. And what we want to do is carefully pull out that blue layer from inside. I highly recommend using a folding tool, but you may be able to do it by hand as well. So you want to put the folding tool in between those two layers of paper, and you want to slide it underneath the blue layer on top, just like this and you want to lift up on the folding tool so that you pull that flap out from inside. So we're just going to pull it all the way out. And you'll notice that we've pulled out a blue triangle. I recommend pulling on that blue triangle slightly just to make sure all of the units are aligned. 
And if you've done it correctly, you'll see that there's actually an existing crease along this white edge here. So what we want to do is tuck this triangular flap from the last unit inside of this white pocket here. And you want to lift up this triangular flap and you carefully want to tuck it inside of that white pocket. So you can just slide it inside of the white pocket as far as it goes, just like this. And once you push it all the way inside, you'll see it will actually collapse along an existing crease. The inside of the model should look like this, and then you can close everything back up. This is technically the completed model, but if you'd like, you can also rearrange the layers in the center to get more of a woven effect. And to do that, you can start with this bottom flap here, and you can work your way around the star clockwise, pulling each layer on top of the next. Just like that. I think it gives the model a nice clean look, but regardless of how you orient those layers, this is a completed star. I hope you've enjoyed this video tutorial on how to fold an origami Martha star designed by Maximiliano Ortiz. Be sure to upload photos of your completed star to Instagram with the hashtag EasyOrigami to be featured here in my next video. Also, be sure to check out Maximiliano's Instagram for more of his impressive work. If you're interested in learning more about his book, Origami Stars, I'll post a link in the video description below. And if you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up or leave a comment below. And of course, subscribe to my channel and hit the notifications bell for more videos like this. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.